In this tutorial we're going to look in depth at the tool database which is the method by which you can manage your own set of tools, the geometry, the feeds and speeds related to those tools for different materials that you want to cut them in and this is all done through uh, the software's tool database. So we're going to start by uh, opening the tool database directly um, within the software and I'm going to just go across now to the toolpath tab and I'm using this toolpath tab swap button so the drawing tools are hidden and the toolpath tab opens up and here is the tool database um, icon so I click this button and our tool database pops up. It's split into two main areas so on the left hand side is a tree list of all of the tools in the database and they are organized under different groups which we can think of as being little nodes in the tree and on the right hand side is the specific information relating to whatever is selected in this tree. So this uh, tool information panel here will change, the contents of this will change as you select different things in the list. So if we take a look at this, this is the default uh, database that you will see when you first install the software and uh, so it will be broadly similar to this. It's uh, divided at the top level here into imperial and metric tools. Now the tools themselves are actually um, very similar, it's just that they're defined in terms of imperial or metric units. So I'm going to just click the, the little minus button here that's on the left of the metric tools and that will fold away the metric tools group. To open it again you can click the plus. So the plus and minus next on the left hand side of each of these groups allows you to open and close that particular group uh, and look at the contents. And so now we're going to take the imperial tools group here and I'm going to start by looking inside the ball nose tools here. So I click the plus and we can see that um, inside the ball nose group we've got two tools defined. So just as with the groups, if I select the tool itself, the right hand panel will now show me all the information relating to this selected tool in my database. In this case I've selected the quarter inch ball nose tool, so we can see the name of the tool, the tool type, uh, any notes which we might have specifically for this tool, um, and then we get down to the geometry that relates to this particular tool type. Uh, if we look in this drop down box here we can see that there's a variety of tool types we might have uh, and depending on what that tool type is the properties that you can define um, for that tool geometry will, will be varied but in each case there will be an, a picture here indicating the tool type uh, and you can see a link between the diameter here and marked on the, the diagram uh, what the D parameter relates to in this case the diameter of the tool Okay, so what I want to do is create a new tool uh, for my database. I've just got myself a brand new half inch ball nose and I want to add it to my database because I'm going to be using it uh, from now on. Uh, the simplest way to add a tool from uh, which has got geometry similar to something that already exists in the, in the database is to select something similar in this case the quarter inch ball nose and with that selected I can select the copy button down here when I click that I, as you would expect I get a duplicate of the selected ball nose tool so I now have two quarter inch ball nose tools but I can start to edit this one, the, the copy uh, to uh, fit the new parameters of the tool that I'm creating so the first thing I want to do is modify the name so that I don't confuse myself so we can make this a half inch ball nose and it is going to have a diameter of half an inch. <clears throat> the half inch here you can see uh, has already actually automatically updated the step over. If you watch this field again as I modify the diameter you'll see that it's updated automatically to reflect whatever this diameter value is and the reason for that is that we uh, typically work as a proportion of the diameter. So the step over here this is the physical value but this property here is what proportion of the whole diameter this is. So essentially for a half nose toolpath uh, we've got a 10% step over. So we're going to step over by 10% of that diameter which is 0 0.05 inches. Uh, you don't have to accept this uh, default situation. You can either modify uh, in terms of percentage or you can simply modify this directly. Uh, 
and the percentage will be updated. So that's uh, how you could define the step over. Now the step over, just to be clear, if you have a raster toolpath, so the tool is moving uh, to, to clear material out, so it's going to cut a path, then move across slightly in X or Y, and cut again in order to clear material out, in, typically in a pocketing toolpath, for example, then this is the value that we'll use to step across the material, the step over. And for a ball nose tool which has a rounded tip, it needs to be fairly fine because otherwise you will leave cusps uh, for each pass that you do across the material. Uh, for an end mill, this might be a much larger proportion of the uh, diameter. Uh, so you just have to choose that according to the tool geometry. But in this case, we're going to say a slightly it's a big tool and we're going to allow for some, we're probably going to use it for roughing say, so we're going to allow a reasonably big step over. The pass depth here uh, is similar but it relates to this, the, the distance by which we will step down into the material on each of multiple passes down into the material. So if we were doing profiling for example and we want to cut out, we're going to take several bytes because the material is quite hard and we know uh, we don't want to break our tool, this is the depth by which um, most of our calculations will be based in determining how many passes to take to cut through the material. So in this case we're saying that we will only for each pass go down by a depth of 0.125 inches into the material. Now that's obviously only half the story, the geometry is really only half the story. The other bit of the story is what um, how fast the tool will be spun and how quickly it'll be pushed through the material for those settings. Uh, so that's in the feeds and speeds section down at the bottom here. So the spindle speed in revolutions per minute uh, is how fast the tool is going to be spun in the spindle. The feed rate is how fast we will move the tool in X and Y through the material, so how hard we'll be pushing it uh, along its cutter pass. And the plunge rate is how quickly we will descend uh, down in Z into the material. Now in both of these cases we can define those uh, in a variety of units. Uh, at the moment they're both defined in terms of inches per minute so we're going to feed the tool into the material at 100 inches per minute across here in X and Y and we're going to plunge it into the material at 30 inches per minute down in Z. Uh, but if we use this drop down box we can, we can vary the units uh, to whatever we need. The final value here is called the tool number and this really is only relevant for those of you who are using a tool changer and it essentially it is the um, indicator to the software of which location in your tool changer setup this tool is. So um, this might be an issue if you have a tool changer occasionally when you output a toolpath um, the software might warn you uh, and in fact it won't allow you to output um, a set of tool paths where the tool geometry for this for a given index here is this is different so in other words it's, it's suggesting to you there that you've you've made a mistake so if you ever get the situation where it says that you've got different geometries with the same tool number and therefore you can't output this as a single toolpath. This is the value you need to come and, and sort out. And essentially what you're putting in here is the actual position in your tool changer of this, this half inch ball nose. And obviously it can't be the same position as a as a V-carve tool or some, some different geometry. Okay, so that's the tool number. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply that change. We see our new ball nose tool has, has been updated in the list. Uh, currently it's sitting right in the middle of our um, set of ball nose tools. I'd really like to organize myself a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the left mouse button and hold it down. And when I do that, I can drag this tool around. So you see the tool icon and I can drag it above the quarter inch tool here and let go of the left mouse button. And now I've reordered my list of ball nose tools uh, in descending order of uh, diameter which is quite convenient. Um, so that's the simplest way to add a, a new tool to your database if you already have a tool here with similar geometry. So select the tool and make a copy of it and then edit the copy. The next thing I want to look at now is creating your own tool groups to further organize your tool database. So uh, that's a fairly simple process. I'm just going to click the little minus button here to close up that group of ball nose tools and instead select the Imperial Tools group at the top here. Now this is significant because when I create the new group this selected group will be the one in which my new group is placed. So with the Imperial Tools selected I'm going down to the new group button and you'll see that a new group is placed inside the Imperial Talks group and it's ready for me to give it a new name. 
Uh, I'm going to call this one Vectric Tools. Uh, and that group now I can put uh, my new tools into. So I'm going to reopen the ball nose group here, take my half inch ball nose that I created earlier. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and drag it up to the Vectric Tools group and let go. And that moves the tool into my new tool group, which will uh, uh, allow me to organize uh, my new tools uh, more easily. And that really is the basics of, um, of organizing uh, the layout of your, of your tool database. OK, so we've created a simple tool uh, based on a copy of an existing tool with similar geometry. Now we're going to create an entirely new tool uh, from scratch. And I'm also going to use a slightly more sophisticated uh, set of geometry. Um, we're going to start by selecting the Vectric Tools group, because that's the group in which the new tool will be created. And then I'm going to click the New button uh, at the bottom here. And the first thing it does is offer me the option here to choose the tool type. And in this case, I'm going to choose the V-Bit tool. And you can see here we've got a sort of much fuller form than we had for the ball nose. Um, but hopefully you can also see that it's a very similar uh, layout. So we have the name at the top, the tool type, any notes we'd like to add. And this time we've got two bits of geometry to worry about, not just the diameter, which is also defined here to show you exactly which diameter we're talking about, with di the diameter of the flutes of our uh, v bit and also the included angle, so the angle of the entire included um, surface here. Um, so we can set these values. The pass depth is the same as with the ball nose, so that's the depth um, down in Z that we will use each pass with this tool, a uh, quarter of an inch in this case, fairly um, strong tool. Uh, and the final pass depth, which is very fine, just 2% of the uh, the head because actually we're going to come to a fine point tip so uh, the final pass step over here is going to effectively determine how many how many what the cusps are like that we'll see at the end here uh, but because it comes to a point really there there's always going to be a, a, a trade-off between the uh, the pass step over that we use and the final surface finish now this tool as with uh, the other um, tapered tools like the engraving tool type um, also has an additional step over which is much much bigger. Now this step over relates to passes before we get down to the final depth. So this tool can also be used um, when it's cutting down into a material at pass heights above the final height that it's going to cut to. And when it's cutting at these heights um, we can use the, the tool to bulk uh, the bulk of the tool to, to hog out material more uh, efficiently using a much bigger step over and it won't affect the final surface finish because uh, these are at heights before it gets to the base of the material. So uh, there's a separate uh, step over value here which we can set to a much higher value. Then the feeds and speeds and the tool number are the same as with the ball nose tool. Um, so with these values all set we can simply apply that tool and the new one appears in the tool database. Now the final tool type I want to look at is the form tool, which is perhaps the most complicated tool to define in the database. Uh, but the reason for that is it's also the most flexible. So if I select the Vectric Tools option here and we do a new tool, and uh, in the tool type here you'll see the form tool. Now the form tool is the uh, type that represents a truly custom cutter. So it's typically representing an OG or shaped form tool that will be used to make mouldings or the uh, architrave or the edges or chamfered edges of your uh, piece. And so as such it can really be um, entirely uh, an arbitrary uh, cutting profile. To deal with this problem what we, we do is we need to define something that's really outside of the tool database and um, if you select this form tool option uh, at any point when you're just editing in the database you'll get the following warning. Okay, And this warning is saying that really a form tool can't be defined without some way of representing the tool profile and we do that using a single open vector which is uh, drawn to scale and exactly matches the right hand side of the profile that we're after. So I'm just going to open that, OK that error and cancel out the tool database so that we are back now looking at um, our normal job inside the software. Uh, and what I have here is some just some vector geometry that's been drawn in the software. Uh, if I select uh, this side and I press N for node editing we can see that it's uh, line span and some arcs. 
Uh, so some simple geometry. As I say, this has been drawn inside the software, but it could just as easily have been imported using any of the standard import options such as DXF. So we can see here that the, um, the geometry um, is drawn to scale as well to give you an idea of uh, or a sort of feel for this we have a five inch square block of material and the tool geometry uh, therefore is for a pretty large cutter with a two inch uh, diameter across the top here. Now just so it's easier to see what the profile looks like to the eye I've drawn both sides of the geometry uh, but as I pointed out earlier on really because it's a spinning tool it is by definition symmetrical and the software is only really interested therefore in the right hand side. Uh, so with the right hand side selected I've split the, the, the drawing here so we only have the right hand side selected I'm going to go back into my tool database and with the Vectric Tools group in which we're going to create our new tools selected uh, I'm going to choose new and this time when we choose the form tool you'll see that it has automatically found the selected um, profile drawn us a diagram that will show us what the finished uh, or the complete tool profile will look like and it's even filled in the diameter which it's found from the scale drawing here. Um, so it's uh, it's pretty effective at picking up those those options but you'll probably still need to come back in and set some properties such as the uh, step over. A one inch step over is going to be pretty unlikely here but equally it's not going to be used generally speaking for uh, any sort of pocketing or area clearance. Uh, but you need to fill in the extra values you like plus of course we can uh, fill in our actual uh, tool so we might call this one uh, OG tool and we should maybe just say that it's going to be two inches just for consistency and when I apply this uh, our new tool is also added to our tool set here. So we've looked now at creating uh, tools either from uh, copies of the existing tools in the database, uh, from scratch defining all the properties within the tool database itself, and using a vector profile to define a custom shaped form tool. Um, the last section of this tutorial now is to talk about uh, how we can uh, manage the database tool database files it's, uh, themselves. So the first thing I want to demonstrate is we can select our new group here and we can export the whole group uh, as a file. So it, the, when I use the export button it will only export the things that are underneath the um, uh, selected group. So it'll be Vectric Tools and all the tools below. So I'm going to just call this Vectric Tools and we can save this file off and I can just now delete that uh, group. It warns me that I'm about to delete something but I'm happy to do that. Uh, and just as we can export a group in a tree we can select uh, a node here and import a set back in. So here's the, the set I've just saved and we can load those back in. So by organizing your tools into groups you can then save them out as a set. You can also save out an individual tool using the same export option and then import them um, into the database as and when you need different sets. Uh, you might want to do this for example uh, if you update the software or you have several different versions of the software um, where you want to um, swap tools between them. The final thing to say about uh, the tool database files is to show you where the main database itself is stored on disk in case you want to back this file up or take a copy of it. OK, so I'm going to close down the database. When I click OK, it's saved um, to disk and the location of that save can be found very easily from within the software itself. Uh, if I select the file menu here, there is an option here to open the application data folder. And when I click that, Windows Explorer opens uh, at the correct location for your product. Now the exact path here will be variable depending on the products that you have, uh, but the layout and structure will be broadly similar to this. And in amongst uh, several other application data folders is the tool database folder. If I open the tool database folder, this file here, tool underscore db, is the tool database. And this is the file that you need to um, copy or back up if you want to keep your uh, database. Okay, so that's the 
files structure for the tool database, uh, importing and exporting groups and the main file itself. Uh, the only other thing to really mention with to the tool database is um, that it was accessible not just from this main icon here, but from within every toolpath as you start to create them. So if I select the profile toolpath, for example, uh, it has um, the same tool uh, definition section here as you'll find in each of the toolpath strategies. The first button here, Select, uh, will open the tool database just as we have been looking at in this tutorial and allow you to select any tool that you've defined and stored in the database. Now there's also an edit button which is subtly different. So select is allowing us to pick a, data, a tool which is a common and shared tool that we're using in a variety of different situations. Um, so it's coming from this, this sort of common database. The edit button here allows us to pick just this tool relating to this toolpath and modify it slightly. So this toolpath will in fact have, essentially have a unique tool associated with it if you modify these values. Um, so it's a way of just essentially having a temporary change to a tool that's very specific to a particular toolpath. Uh, and that's the difference between these two options. Uh, most of the structure of the edit tool uh, will be uh, exactly the same as you would see if you were creating the tool in the database. But these changes will only uh, relate to the tool um, that's currently associated with this toolpath. Okay, and that really is um, is everything we want to cover about the tool database, tool geometry, and tool management.